Am I supposed to be flattered? Gorgeous women do not go to medical school. Unless they're as damaged as they are beautiful. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter and I'm a medical student who also studied acting in college. I'm gonna go over House MD today. It's a TV show that actually a friend of mine was telling me, he said, did you know that House MD is like the pinnacle of HIPAA violations? And I was like, ooh, that, that sounds really good. And I remembered that a lot of you voted for it. Thank you for all the votes. Vote for the next one right here. Check out all the other ones I've done. This is my third in the review series. I also reviewed Cells at Work. Well, I got copyright striked twice by YouTube and three strikes and apparently they have the rights to close your channel. So I'm not posting that one yet. If you understand law and fair use, please reach out to me on my Instagram. Now we're gonna go and watch House MD. Three, two, one, boom, boom. Let's watch it. She a resident late for work. Okay, this is really slow. There should speed up. Good morning, guys. Aw, she sounds like a good teacher. Everybody's in their seat. You mean to tell me that this was a preschool class and the teacher was late, but no one subbed in? They just let the kids run around. I would be alarmed if I were a parent. Like, oh, uh, the teacher's late. I put someone there to watch these little rascals. Shy. How come we always have to tell you what we did and you don't tell us what you did? Dang. You should never keep anything from your parents. Good teacher. And I told mine. <laughs> what? Clap up. Is she having a stroke? Oh my gosh. We know that word. Call the nurse. I would say call 911. No, oh, she's having a seizure. What? Is this episode called Call the Nurse? That would be really cool. I would have written call 911. It's less characters to write than call the nurse. That's why when I speak, I also say the patient is sweating instead of the patient is diaphoretic, even though that's the medical term. It means the same thing. See that? They all assume that I'm a patient because of this king. So put on a white coat like the rest of us. I don't want him to think I'm a doctor. You know, people don't want a sick doctor. Your cousin doesn't like the diagnosis. What's with his voice? I wouldn't either. Brain tumor. She's gonna die. Boring. That's really good storytelling because the very first thing that a character says, especially the main character, is usually used to signify their character type. So here we're seeing that he's really rude from the very first line. I like that he doesn't wear a white coat. I know I don't like wearing my white coat also just because no one washes white coats and no one washes ties and we're always around sick people so we're carrying illnesses from one patient to another. That's my two cents. So far I will say that we are five minutes into the episode and I am the least interested in this show so far. It could be really good. My measure for whether or not I will continue watching something, we should be hooked within three minutes and I'm not so far. But I will keep watching. I just will say that compared to the other medical TV shows that I've watched, they have pretty good hooks in the beginning. This one's pretty slow. What are we gonna do, Magic School Bus right now? Isn't treating patients why we became doctors? No, treating illnesses is why we became doctors. That's wrong. What the heck? I'm definitely of the mentality like the, the black doctor was saying that we came into medicine to treat patients. We had a patient who was immobile and they defecated on themselves overnight, which just means that they, they pooped on themselves. And we were doing rounds and we realized that no one had changed him. So we went to the nurse and we were like, hey, uh, Mr. So-and-so needs to get changed. And they were like, oh, well, we're on shift change. So I went back to the doctor and I was like, the nurses said that they're busy, they're on shift change, they can't do it right now. He was like, okay, we'll do it. And that was such a great role model experience for me because he's right. We should just do whatever needs to be done to help these people. That's why we went into medicine. It doesn't matter what your position is. When I told some of my friends this story who are in medical school, they're like, I didn't go to medical school to change people's diapers. And I'm like, if that were your mom or your dad or anyone that you cared about in bed, does it matter who changes them? No. They just, you just care that it's done and these people are treated in a humane way. But there are definitely some people who are of Dr. House's mindset where, no, we're not here to do that. That's for someone else. We're here to be use our brains and to diagnose their brain tumors. Which I think is completely wrong. Treating patients is what makes most doctors miserable. I was actually talking with some of the emergency medicine residents and they were telling me that there has been research that was done and they saw that giving patients sandwiches 
actually had improved health outcomes. Not just like, oh, I felt better or I liked the staff. They actually improved health-wise better than other patients, which is one of those social things that Dr. House here is saying that we're not supposed to do as doctors. Well, if you just focus on the illness, then sure, they'll have an outcome, but they'll have an even better health outcome if you just pay attention to the social stuff. And Dr. House is statistically and research-wise wrong. Your reputation won't last if you don't do your job. The clinic is part of your job. She's doing this thing in acting, which is the neck thing. When you're angry at someone, this is bad acting because you're not only stressing your back out, you're also stressing your neck muscles as well as cutting off your vocal cords because you want sound to go in one motion, up and out. Or photocopies, you're still yelling. I'm angry! I'M ANGRY! Is she gonna have a seizure in there? Oh, is she... What? What? What's happening? She can't breathe. She's having an allergic reaction to the but she'll be dead in two minutes. Oh! Tricky on Tricky Austin. That crunch. Just get some rest for now, okay? She looks like Emma Swan from Once Upon a Time. The resident. Told you. Can't trust people. I knew she was allergic to get and figured it Oh, it is her! Oh, what's up, Emma Swan? <laughs> I love Once Upon a Time. I thought everybody lied. Truth begins in lies. Disagree. It's like the script writers were fumbling over themselves. Don't ever talk to patients. Just kidding, now talk to patients. I'd be like, this is the most contradictory doctor ever. No, because they're yummy. You want one? Make your back feel better. What? Unfortunately, you have a deeper problem. This is so bizarre that it's unbelievable. Like, I don't know if they're going out of their way to make this like a comedy, but there is no way this would ever happen. I think any patient who was offered medication like that from a doctor's own pill bottle would report it. This is just unbelievable. But the steroids, the steroids, He's having an asthma attack. Stop. What? Forget it. If you don't trust steroids, you shouldn't trust doctors. What? What? That seemed like the first good scene. What was happening? Okay, so that was a really good scene. Communication is 55% body language, 38% voice inflection, and only 7% content, what you actually say. So Dr. House here was saying stuff about asthma, but the kid looked fine at the end by body language, so we know as an audience that something deeper was happening, and that's why I said that this is a good scene, because now I'm excited and interested to find out what's gonna happen to relate back to this. Steroids. Give her steroids. High doses of prednisone. Oh, that's why. That was the link to the previous scene. And if we're wrong? Then we learn something else. The point of going through schooling and residency and all this stuff is to understand the systematic approach of starting broad and working your way so that you can use imaging and labs and stuff to make definite diagnoses, not just picking at straws. I mean, sometimes you do, but it doesn't seem like they've done the pr proper workup to be picking at straws at this early point. You could smell a parrot. You said you didn't have any pets in this class. A parrot is a bird. <laughs> She's such a good actress. A parrot is a bird. Also, I don't think the doctor would go to the school. That's just dramatizing. But I'm pretty sure I can sue if you fire me for not breaking into some lady's house. What? That's so... <laughs> I get what they were tr going for, but that bite was so forced. Like... <laughs> this is just too convoluted of a script. Like, less is more, fam. You're comparing me to a Nazi? Nice. That's a red flag. It's my hospital. Is she a doctor or is she an administrator? I don't get it. Where did the white coat come from? I think that's one thing that needs to be further clarified here. Who are these people? You got lucky. Oh, so it was cerebral vasculitis? Cool, huh? Okay, you can't say cool, huh, if you got it wrong the first couple of times. He's trying to be like the Sherlock of medicine, but you're not. I think the good doctor, Dr. Sean Murphy, was better. How long do we have? 
to pitch a tumor, we're talking a month or two. Why would Dr. House ask how long do we have if he's supposed to be the know-it-all? It's not consistent, and that's what's throwing me off a lot. I was thinking it also might be fibromyalgia. <laughs> I think I've seen this scene somewhere, maybe on Instagram as a meme. <laughs> oh yeah, like when patients look things up online, I think it might be. And they always take that pause because they know that the doctor knows that they were looking it up. They're like, I think it was fibromyalgia. <laughs> and he's like, what? Excellent diagnosis. Is there anything for that? <laughs> you always eat during break-ins? No one would ever break into a patient's house. House. Oh! Family history of neurological problems? If he's the cousin, why didn't he just ask for the keys? And or ask a family member for the keys? Why did it have to be a break-in? I don't understand what having them do the break-in adds to the story versus just having the police do it or asking for the key. You called her Rachel, her name is Rebecca. Yes, yes, her name is Rebecca. He's the guy who slept with her? Department of Diagnostic Medicine? Isn't medicine diagnostic in and of itself? Is that a real thing? Oh, it's pathology, radiology, and laboratory medicine. She wants to go home and die. Now oh, he's finally gonna go see her and go talk to her. Why is he praised as like this ultimate di diagnostician? if he got it wrong multiple times and never talks to patients. Nothing about him seems admirable or attractive. Have you actually seen the work? When you're all better, I'll show you my diplomas. Hey, you were sure I had vasculitis too. And cancer. Now I can't walk. What made you a cripple? Yes, go for it. Episode one, go for it. I had an infarction. A heart attack? Did you think you were dying? I hoped I was dying. Wow. We used to see patients because you don't like the way people look at you. Wow. That's a really good line. You hide in your office because you're afraid of the way that people look at you. And I was mistaken. I thought the very first line that he gave us was when he diagnosed her and said, oh, she has cancer, and then he moved off. I called it as him being rude. But if we look back at it, the very first line that he said was, look at all these people looking at me like I'm the patient. That was the very first line that Dr. House gave us, and now they're, she's addressing it. Like, wow, that's the reason you don't like seeing patients or coming out of your office, because you are self-conscious about your own diagnosis as a patient for someone else. Wow, okay. This is on the upswing. I don't care if you can walk, see, it's always ugly. Always. She's a great actress. We can live with dignity, we can't die with it. She's a really good actress. <sighs> Two pills? Yeah. Probably make you keep taking the pills even if you get every one of those. I thought she was going to cut him off while he was talking. Like, she was so shocked that two pills was going to be the thing that saved her life that while he was saying the side effects, she would have just taken it. Why, Why did you hire me? I knew she was going to ask that. I was about to predict it. Why did you hire Does it matter? me? I didn't see a black guy. I just saw a doctor. With a juvenile record. With a juvenile record. <laughs> I worked very hard to get where I am. But you didn't have to. Dang! They're going full dive into this. This is so inappropriate, but I want to watch. That must feel really awful. If you worked really hard to get somewhere and then someone's just like, no, I only did it because like you look pretty. Or you're handsome. Which, you know, I don't know what that feels like. People choose the paths that gain them the greatest rewards for the least amount of effort. That's a law of nature. Wait, what? Isn't that everyone in medical school? Does medical school come easy to some people? <sighs> Better not. That's why I hired you. Got a married rich. Oh, because she had other options? I guess I had other options. Would I have been hired? Am I supposed to be flattered? Gorgeous women do not go to medical school. Unless they're as damaged as they are beautiful. Oh my gosh! I wonder how people feel about that statement. Gorgeous women do not go to medical school. Let me think about my class. Gorgeous? 
I'm sure there are gorgeous women in medical school. Unless they're damaged? What? But I can't. Even if it costs me your money. She's the best doctor we have. No, he's not! Is that the best you have? He didn't solve the case. The other guy gave the option of the x-ray. Literally, he was the hurdle. I don't get this at all. Aww. We're happy you're not dead, Miss Rebecca. <laughs> Kids are the best. The fibromyalgia guy. He says he needs a refill. He says he needs a refill <laughs> on the candy. Got change for doll. Oh, uh, they should have ended it on that. That would have been great. That would have been a great ending if they ended it on that. You got to change for a dollar. He needs a refill. Got change for a dollar. <laughs> that's such a good ending. Okay, so that's House Episode 1, Season 1. It's just called Pilot. I think it would have been cool if they called it called The Nurse. The ending definitely was so much better than the beginning. The whole thing in film is show, don't tell. And we're being shown that he's a really bad doctor, both clinically and in terms of his interactions with patients. But we're being told that he's the best and they can't let go of him. So that's that was weird. The medical stuff was good. They showed you how to like develop a differential, which is just a list of po possible diagnoses. You try to have all your diagnoses and think about labs and tests that you could do to then narrow it. Thank you all so much for watching this with me. I really appreciate your time. If you have any questions down below or any comments about this show, or if you want to recommend anything else, just put it down below in the comments. I try to read every single comment. And as always, be safe, be strong, gotta work on it, be swagged. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one. Next one, next one, next one. Bye! I gotta get up. Bye! Into the woods to visit mother. The way is clear, the light is good. I have no fear, nor no one should. <laughs> My channel, today we're gonna talk about Grey's Anatomy, I guess. No, let's talk about um, House. Heads, we do Grey's Anatomy, episode two. House, we do bad. I have no idea what they're saying. Are there captions? Yes! First year of medical school. If you hear hoofbeats, you think horses, not zebras. Uh, first year of medical school, angels, teams with zebras? What are you saying? I managed to make it to 17 without a criminal record. I managed to make it to 17 without a criminal record. Kids do that all the time. Especially newborns, like babies, whenever I put the stethoscope on them, that's when they're like sleeping. Like, and then when I touch them, they always go, so I try to like warm it, but stethoscopes are just notoriously freezing. Do you have cable TV here somewhere? General Hospital starts in eight minutes. No <laughs> uh, Type one. Who's this blonde guy in the back? I don't even know when he came into the story. But Chase is right. X his name? But Chase is right. Cheese? <laughs> what made you a cripple? I had an infarction. Heart attack. I know I'm still belaboring this whole scene, but I just will add that I one time did have to explain asthma to some parents. Um, this was a very interesting case. I was on PEDS inpatient, and the kid was brought into the emergency department because he was having respiratory distress, and the attendings were telling the family, the mom and the dad, that the kid would have to be admitted to the hospital for oxygen and for therapy and maintenance of his breathing because he could progress into respiratory failure, which is really dangerous. The kid could die. And the parents were really, um, the parents were not on board with that plan. And basically a court order had to be threatened to the family in order to keep the kid in the hospital because we didn't want him to go home and potentially die because his breathing wasn't proper. There was actually talk amongst the residents and the team like, why didn't the parents want this, you know, do they not care about their kid and all this stuff. So they were they were labeled as like the conflict family and at the end of the day my residents were like, Peter you can go home, 
Just the last thing, could you go talk to the patients in room three, the kid's family, um, and just let them know about the asthma action plan we're gonna send the kid home with, which just explains how the parents should look out for asthma symptoms and all this stuff. I, I went into the room thinking that perhaps voices were gonna be raised um, at me, so I was just, I was willing to take it. Um, but then I walked in and the, the father was really kind, and basically we talked for a good 20 minutes, and I found out that the reason he was kind of nervous about bringing the kid into the hospital was because him and his wife are struggling financially and they didn't know how they were going to be able to afford the services for their kid. Um, they also have other kids at home so it was just a lot of a lot of, a lot to think about and a huge burden on them because as we all know hospital stay is pretty expensive. Um, and then when I told him about the medications we were going to give he just further showed his concern by saying, oh, I'm just nervous because the only thing I know about steroids is like what I see on TV and all these bodybuilders and stunting growth. I don't want to stunt my son's growth. And I was like, this is, I told him like, this is good. I'm glad you're telling me this because this shows that you care. Then I went on to explain that the steroids we're giving are inhaled. So it only goes to his lungs. It's not going to affect um, him systemically. And also it's a very low dose. So it's just, it was good that I got to see that this conflict family or this, you know, trouble family was actually just a really good family and they were struggling financially, which is normal. Um, well, it's not normal to, like, to struggle, but it's normal to be struggling. Um, I don't even know if there was a distinction between that. But it was just, it was good, it was a good experience for me. I'm glad that I saw that so that in the future I can not just take other people's word for it and make my own understandings of, about patients and their families and their circumstances based on what I find out. Um, so I just want to add that to this story. I completely forgot we were watching this house thing. <laughs>